I have been doing therapy for over a year now, and I have never met my therapist in person. I'm Jen Tatro, and this is From Jen. All of the images I have of therapy have come from television and movies and they usually involve someone lying on a big leather couch pouring out their feelings while a doctor sits by nodding and making notes and occasionally asking, how does that make you feel? Honestly, that old school academia therapist office decor makes me feel pretty good. So I wouldn't have minded that at all. But the couch I sit on for therapy is in the comfort of my own home. And my therapist does ask me how I feel, but she does it from the screen of my iPad. If you've never done online therapy or virtual therapy before, but you've been thinking about it and wondering what it's like, I'm going to tell you. This is my personal experience with one therapist, so I don't expect my situation to be universal and different doctors likely do things differently. But I'm going to share how a typical session works for me what I see as the pros and cons of doing therapy this way, and how effective I think it's been to see a therapist via video chat instead of in person. For me, a typical therapy session begins in one of two ways. When I was in my insurance company system, it would start about 15 or 20 minutes prior to my appointment time when I'd be texted an assessment link. They really like data. The assessment consisted of a series of questions intended to assess my anxiety, my stress, my depression levels, as well as any worrisome use of drugs or alcohol. Once I completed the questionnaire, I'd go to a secure website, type in my name, test that my camera and microphone were working, and wait for my doctor to initiate the session, which she usually did once she'd had the opportunity to look at my scores and compare them to all the previous sessions. Then we would use those results to direct what we were going to talk about. If my stress levels were up, we would discuss what was happening to cause that. If my depression was down, we'd talk about what I'd been doing differently over the past week. Usually those discussions would lead naturally to something deeper because the way we react to present circumstances is usually linked to the past. Depending on the day, we'd either work on making connections between the present and the past, or simply discuss strategies and practices that could help me to more easily deal with current events. All of this was done with both of our cameras on so I could see her and she could see me. It feels like any FaceTime or messenger chat, except that instead of using one of those apps, it's done through a privacy safeguarded telemedicine platform. They still work the same way as just about any video chat program you're used to using. Starting a few months ago, I left my insurance company system and began seeing my therapist privately. There are a lot of reasons for that that I won't go into, but I will say that that changed the pacing of our sessions because Insurance companies require a level of documentation and proof of progress that is not as necessary when you are seeing a therapist individually. Our sessions are paced a bit differently now. We skip that pre-screening questionnaire entirely, but we do use just the same telemedicine platform, which I'm assuming is associated with the provider rather than the insurance. And almost every session begins with the same simple question. How have you been? Therapy appointments don't really require any preparation, but I do find that it helps to think about that question beforehand so I can give an honest answer. And that's especially true because I am not always completely in touch with my feelings. And if you're considering therapy, that might be the case for you too. These days, before a session, I also just jot down anything that I know I want to talk about. Um, any PTSD triggers I've experienced, reactions that I haven't been able to make sense of, 
or just situations I've been having difficulty dealing with. If you can't do that in the beginning, do not stress over it. In my first several appointments, I could barely manage anything beyond, I don't want to feel like this. Please just, just help me not feel like this. I don't want to feel this way. I suspect that most of what I'm describing isn't really all that different from in-person therapy, but I can think of both pros and cons for choosing online versus in-person. First of all, you have more choice. My therapist, for example, is only semi-local to me. It would be almost an hour long drive for me to get to her office. There's a shortage of therapists in general right now. So it was really helpful in terms of getting an appointment in the first place to be able to expand the range of possibilities. Second, COVID safety. I know most people are not talking about COVID safety anymore, but when I first started therapy, there were more COVID protections in place than there are now. And any medical appointments that could be moved online were. And as we see surges go up and down, I think that's going to be the case for a while going forward. In-person therapy is more possible now than it was at that time. But in my case, my husband's immunocompromised. So I really appreciate having one less thing that adds to his risk factors. Comfort and convenience. When you're anxious, going out in public is hard. When you're stressed, adding time to your schedule is hard. When you're depressed, everything is hard. Only having to go as far as the spare bedroom for therapy lowers the barrier to entry when things are hard. And if you're going to therapy, things are hard. If I want to, I can do therapy in my pajamas. I can eat and drink during sessions. I don't have to deal with traffic or a line at reception or other patients seeing my ugly crying after I come out at the end of the hour. Plus, I get to process my emotions in a familiar environment with my favorite blankets and a cat nearby. What about some cons? I realize that I am lucky to have a spare bedroom with a door I can close for therapy sessions. If you live in more crowded situations, if you have small children, or if you are in a dangerous living situation, that kind of privacy can be really hard to come by, and I get that. Once when I was in crisis mode at the hospital with Kevin, my therapist suggested doing a session from the car. So you really can connect from anywhere, but that would negate some of the previous convenience pros, obviously. Just as privacy is a privilege, I know that having internet access and a device capable of doing video chat is also a privilege. It would be really hard to do a therapy session from a library or a school computer. We have also had some issues with technology over the course of my therapy. There's times when the sound or the video don't work or connections are slow. It is rare, but it happens. And if you are someone who gets really frustrated by that, you'll have to take that into consideration. Those issues are unavoidable. Finally, not everybody feels comfortable talking to someone through a screen, especially about painful, personal, or intimate topics. In my case, I actually found it easier. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I'm used to spilling my guts online. And I actually find it less daunting to make intimate confessions in this context. Maybe that's not you though, especially if you didn't come of age in the internet era, if you do not use technology for communication a lot. I still suggest giving it a try because it may be easier than you initially thought. And if it doesn't work out, maybe it would be better to see someone in person. You could always switch. I did a quick Google search to see what the effectiveness of online therapy was. And it turned up multiple studies that show it's just as effective for many conditions as in person. I am not going to link all of those in the notes, but I urge you to look for yourself. It's not hard to find this info. From a personal perspective, I have to say that it's worked really well for me. 
I am in a way better place emotionally than I was a year ago. I've been able to build a trusting relationship with my online therapist and she could point me in the right direction when I did need help that I couldn't get virtually. For example, when I needed to see a doctor in person to get a prescription. And I'm honestly not sure I would have started therapy at all or continued with it for as long if I hadn't had the online option. And that in itself is a recommendation in its favor. Let me know in the comments if you think there's an aspect to the experience that I didn't cover or that you're curious about. And I would love to hear your experiences as well. Oh, and I suppose I should tell you, I have never once spent a session lying on my back on the couch, but I could if I wanted. Until next time, I am wishing you love and joy and all of those good things.